Welcome to Working in Teams, Initial Tools for Teaming, Ground Rules and Action Plans. The objectives for Initial Tools for Teaming, Ground Rules and Action Plans are to create and describe smart ground rules, develop and refine a team action plan, establish ground rules and an initial action plan for an HIT team. We will begin this lecture by talking about the initial steps of team formation and some tools and guidelines that will help you as you strengthen your teaming skills. Leadership and team composition are both threads that run through any course in team dynamics. Our goal in this lecture is to provide practical ideas and specific guidance in how to actually build this type of skill base. We guarantee that you will find yourself pulling on this information as you move into the world of health IT. John Wooden, the legendary coach and mentor to basketball players for decades, wrote about team building experiences and the secrets to strong leadership in his book, The Essential Wooden, A Lifetime of Lessons on Leaders and Leadership. In this book, Wooden asserts that having faith in your team members and possessing a strong belief in your goal is what makes a true leader. If your team is able to sense a lack of conviction or faith in their abilities, chances are the team will respond in kind. In short, lack of resolve and ambition is contagious and may result in poor team performance. Therefore, each member of the team must believe in what he or she is doing. If anyone is in doubt, it's time to ask some hard questions. Coach Wooden provided six rules for creating an effective team, which are listed on the slide. Although Wooden was specifically discussing a sports team, it's not hard to see how these rules can be applied elsewhere. Wooden is a scholar of observation and behavior analysis. His rules encourage the support of good behaviors and identification of, and dealing with, those behaviors that are not so good. For example, he says to consider team spirit and morale, facilitate it when it is high, and build it when it is waning. Wooden calls for a leader to be alert and to identify those who have a healthy competitive streak while keeping an eye out for those whose aggressive nature results in suboptimal outcomes, such as intimidation and bullying. In this same vein, another important wooden rule is that troublemakers must not be tolerated and must be dealt with promptly and firmly. This sounds a lot like child psychology, but it is amazing how many times bad behavior is tolerated, be it a child throwing a tantrum in a grocery store or some pro ball player taking a cheap shot when he thinks no one is watching giving each individual a fair chance and allowing him to benefit from every opportunity that is earned is also one of the foundational dimensions of a strong team according to Wooden. The coach noted a few characteristics in his players that he believes are good to reward and nurture including fight, determination, courage, desire, a cooperative nature and a positive attitude. Remember these as you begin teaming in health IT. Capitalize on the good and address the weak. Moving a bit deeper into the first objective, and in addition to Wooden's rules, it is important that the ground rules for the team are set. We did briefly touch upon ground rules earlier, but again, our goal in this unit is not to just talk about them, but to provide you with guidance and how-to. Recall that ground rules are the basic rules of operation that are used by the team. They must be agreed to and enforced by all members of the team. Ground rules lay the foundation for team interaction, respect, and caring, and they help to break down the barriers that are particularly inherent in healthcare domains. Ground rules focus on three elements, task, processes, and norms, and lay out the expectations and governance around each one. 
As can be seen on the slide, task ground rules lay out the tasks, the expected activities around the task, and the team deliverables that are associated with the task. Process ground rules are similar. They specify the rules that govern the execution of the task or the processes that are undertaken in reaching the team goal. The norm ground rules are those that dictate the manner in which team relationships will be handled. For example, things such as allowing the sharing of ideas, not interrupting, etc. Ground rules can also be used to determine procedures and assignments, as well as how to solve problems and conflicts. Ground rules should be established as early as possible, preferably at the first meeting. All team members should be involved in developing the rules, providing input, and all must agree with the ground rules. Remember, team members can be coming from diverse backgrounds, with multiple perspectives, and most likely influenced by the organization's hierarchical culture. The early meetings are an opportunity to establish consistent parameters and rules of the road. Consider your previous experience in working in a team. Can you recall what worked well and what didn't? Have you been involved in a team where the ground rules were developed jointly, then firmly and clearly relayed to all members of the team? Just as child behaviorists will tell a parent in regard to healthy child rearing, Rules should be followed, rules should be consistently enforced, and they must be reinforced by others who are dealing with the child in question. The guidance is the same in health IT. The point is that the way the rules are operationalized are the same. Allowing a team member who is rude or disrespectful to continue bad behavior will only detract from your team performance. Rules do change, therefore they may require updating. A strategy that sometimes helps with teams in this regard is the assignment of one member to serve as a rotating process monitor, who helps the group in their activities to adhere to the ground rules while assessing rules for relevancy, correctness, and appropriateness. With that said, a process monitor should not be looked upon as a disciplinarian waiting to wrap the knuckles of someone who disobeys. Instead, particularly if the process monitor role rotates at every meeting, it can be looked upon as a support to enhance team performance, and it may actually help with enhancing self-awareness of behaviors across the entire team. What we have provided on this slide is a separation of ground rules based on which ones may be better assessed by a process monitor versus those that are a byproduct of the overall work of the team in setting the ground rules in the first place. The last four listed here, agreed to, followed, reinforced, and updated, are those that are most appropriate for the process monitors to address. This slide shows the SMART framework, a helpful mnemonic or tool for writing good ground rules. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Timely. When a ground rule is written, it should be SMART. It might be helpful for you to think of a ground rule, perhaps a rule that you believe is necessary to ensure good team performance. As an example, let's say the ground rule is everyone will be nice. Is that specific enough? Is it a clear statement of what you want to achieve? 
Well, yes, you want to be sure that team members are nice to one another, but nice is very subjective and variable. How would you enforce that? Maybe it would be easier to break this rule into more specific and measurable components. What are the behaviors you think would constitute nice? Maybe members will allow a person to complete her thought before offering her a suggestion. Disagreements with a proposal are welcomed and must be provided in a respectful fashion. If a proposed rule is too broad, break it down into smaller chunks. Defining and deconstructing a rule into smaller pieces will help you gain clarity, direction, motivation, and focus. It will also help the process monitor to assess and enforce a ground rule. As alluded to earlier, a rule should be measurable, meaning that when the rule is met or broken, one can determine whether it has or not and possibly to what degree. Of course, writing a rule that is not attainable is an exercise in futility and a waste of resources. In short, don't create rules that no one will be able to adhere to. For example, while it would be highly desirable that the rule all cell phones and beepers must be turned off during a meeting if you are working with busy clinicians who are on call or who have patients in the critical care unit or women in ending labor setting this type of rule would violate the principle of being attainable don't set impossible rules rules should be relevant which seems unnecessary to say and timely a timely ground rule is one that is set before it is needed and retired when it is no longer relevant. For instance, if there is a ground rule that states that team members should not discuss details of a purchase plan with a vendor, the team should know that before a team member slips and reveals some aspect that was intended to be kept internal to the project team. On the slide, we present some rather abstract or general team rules. Yes, some of these could be used as ground rules, such as team members communicate daily with one another. Others may be too broad. Some of these rules seem like common sense, such as the problem is studied before a solution is created. But you might be surprised at how often this rule is violated, particularly in health IT. As a brief example, many of you as a member of a health IT team probably have felt like you were a contestant on the Jeopardy game show. If you are familiar with that show, the answer is given to the contestant and the contestant must come up with the question. This is what happens. A new device comes out. It is purchased and given to a team to figure out what problem to apply it to. This violates the notion that the problem should be studied before the solution is arrived at. Health and healthcare is not like Jeopardy, and the sequence of ready, fire, aim does not work. These general rules are simply provided as an example. Chances are they will require much additional work before they could be usable by a specific team. The second objective in this unit is related to developing and refining a team action plan. Why create an action plan? Ben Franklin's statement resonates in this regard. He said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. In other words, a team without a plan is lost before even leaving the starting line. The action plan should guide the team. An action plan is derived at inception of the project and charts a general course. Of course, as the team develops and the norming stage occurs, the plan will mature and morph. The action plan of the team is not written in stone. It simply gives the team a charge, clarifies the mission, and sets preliminary goals and responsibilities. Now that you have set clear team ground rules and have the beginnings of an action plan, further definition of the plan is necessary. 
The key of a solid plan is clarity of the mission and the goal. The parameters or scope of the project must be very clear, including commitments and timelines. This includes setting clear boundaries of what is in scope and what is not. Scope boundaries frequently require a revisit, particularly in regard to health IT, as scope creep is a common occurrence. These types of discussions are critically important. It assures that all team members have the same expectations and shared vision. A solid understanding of the goal is also vital. It engenders confidence and team buy-in when everyone has their eyes on the same spot on the horizon. Helping yourself and your team to get this level of clarity can be assisted by asking these simple questions. Who is doing what? What are they doing? Where are they doing it? When are they doing it? Why are they doing it? And how will they do it? These questions form the basis for developing the action plan. It is also very important to come to terms with what is not part of the goal or falls outside of the scope. This will decrease misunderstanding, distraction, and wasted effort. Action plans must be documented with the understanding that they are a living document and will be modified most likely over time. A basic action plan template that provides the who, what, where, when, how is provided here on the screen with a few extra bells and whistles like dates and the like. There are many, many tools that are used in team management such as work breakdown structures, PERT charts, Gantt charts, and other project management frameworks that are very common tools in project management, which we will provide shortly. Most of these tools are part and parcel of project management software, such as MS Project and others. The point here is that, in contrast to just printing out the action plan example and using a pencil, different soft packages can be used more efficiently to help with team and project management. We are showing you individual examples for illustrative purposes only. An expectation of a health IT professional is competency in software of this nature. There are many tools to choose from and the choice may be dependent on the needs of your team, the available resources, and the dictates of an agency regarding which tools they support. Team needs are unique, so the ability to modify the structure of a plan is important. For example, in the action plan example in the slide, you will see a column titled The Originator. The team that used this example wanted to track whose idea a particular task was, so that in case of a need to backtrack to find a specific answer or gain additional insight, team members would know who to go back to. Another example of a tool that can be used is the Work Breakdown Structure, or WBS. The WBS is commonly used in project management and is designed to help break down a project into manageable chunks that can be effectively scoped and managed. A WBS is a visual representation of the high-level tasks of the team. In a one-page view, the team's plan is illustrated graphically. A WBS is also a great way for the team to see the bigger picture, how their work fits into the grand plan, the teams that are both upstream and downstream, and how they interact. A WBS also provides information that may be needed by a specific team in regards to identifying additional pockets of expertise or temporary team members that can provide specialized expertise. A Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that illustrates a project schedule broken down by descriptive tasks and is another helpful tool for teams. Gantt charts illustrate the start and finish dates of each individual task. Some charts also show the dependency relationships between activities. 
Gantt charts can be used to show current schedule status, overlap, and overall team progress. A PERT chart is a graphic illustration of a project as a network diagram and is another commonly used tool for team and project management. A PERT chart consists of numbered or lettered nodes, each circle or rectangle, that represent an event or a project milestone. The nodes are linked by vectors, directional lines, that represent defined tasks in the project. The direction of the arrows on the vectors indicates the sequence of tasks. Some people prefer the PERT chart over the Gantt chart because of the way it illustrates task dependencies. On the other hand, the PERT chart can be more difficult to interpret, especially on complex projects. The takeaway points from these last several slides is that there are many tools available for helping you to work in or with teams. Many of these tools overlap with project management approaches. You do not need to be a project manager, however, to work in a team, and as a matter of fact, most teams in healthcare are comprised of diverse user groups where the presence of an experienced project manager is a real bonus. It's a good idea for anyone working in healthcare to understand the basics of team management and the tools that can be used to support teams. We will continue to detail more of these tools over the next few units, and we encourage you to learn from colleagues, discuss with your team, explore, and experiment. As we start to sum up this unit, we return to the basic concepts of teams, tools, and structure. Teams do require management. They do require structure. They do require distributed leadership and they do require documentation. Setting the ground rules and creating action plans require collaboration, buy-in, and these elements must be recorded. It is not our place to propose which tools may work best for any given team. It could be that a simple paper notebook will suffice, although we would hope that as you accelerate your health IT practice, you will find ways to further adopt digital methods. Other tools that we did not explicitly cover include meeting agendas, meeting minutes, and communication support such as a wiki or similar to encourage distributed dialogue and collaborative document development and distribution. Teams are seldom, if ever, in one place. A point that may seem obvious but again is one that is frequently neglected is that documenting team activities, communications, plans, and interactions is imperative. Yes, documentation can be time-consuming, especially when your project is on a tight schedule. It is an easy thing to either discard or get back to it later. However, documenting in some fashion is a responsibility of all teams and a dimension of accountability. It's like an immunization. It's good for you, but not too many people enjoy getting one. A team that maintains strong plans, consistent and clear communications and plans, is one that stands a much higher chance of becoming a high-performing team. This concludes Initial Tools for Teaming, Ground Rules and Action Plans for HIT Teams. In summary, this unit has provided you with a lot of foundational content for setting up your team. To have an effective, productive team, smart ground rules need to be set by the team to ensure all are on board with the task, the work ahead, and how the work will be completed. Member buy-in to the ground rules is enhanced when they are created and vetted collaboratively. We also talked about the rules for rules likening to certain parenting skills. We said they must be clear and consistent, and in teams, the role of the enforcer or process monitor should be rotated. In a continuation of our goal to impart practical aspects of team management, 
we provided examples of a few ground rules, then provided an overview of tools that can be used to help manage the processes, timelines, responsibilities, and documentation of team activities. Future units will delve into other approaches to teams in health IT.